Would you stand with me, please, all over this house? Good to see you, Dr. Smith. Just open your mouth yes, Lord. and tell the Lord what you think about him. Yes, yes. Okay, let's try that with somebody else. Open your mouth and tell the Lord what you think about him. destroyed them. Now therefore O Lord our God I beseech thee save thou us out of his hand that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God even thou only. 
Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, That which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, uh -huh. king of Syria, I have heard. <laughs> then Isaiah, the son of Amos, said to, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, That which thou hast prayed to me uh -huh. against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I, heard. I have heard. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> I want you to look at somebody and tell them how to pray the evil away. You may be seen. Yes, sir. Yes, God. 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 During the lesson on the mount, Jesus taught a pericope about prayer. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 9, carrying all the way through verse 13, we have what we have noted as the model prayer. Some have called it the kingdom prayer. Some have called it the Lord's prayer. Right, right. But nephew, I know it's not the Lord's prayer. I know it's not the Lord's prayer because he gave it away. He said, after this manner, you pray. It's not his prayer, he, he gave it away. But I know it's not his prayer also because there's a phrase in the prayer that he can't pray. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Teach us. You can pray that legitimately. Right. Jesus could not pray that phrase because he is the sinless Lamb of God. Yes, sir. Jesus gives us this pericope in prayer and he carries us through phrases because usually that's what we've remembered in the prayer. We have remembered the phrases. Our Father which art in heaven. That's a phrase. Hallowed be thy name. That's a phrase. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That, that's a phrase. Give us this day our daily bread. Yes, that, sir. That, that's a phrase. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's, that's a phrase. Lead us not into temptation. That's a phrase. Uh -huh. Deliver us from evil. Uh -huh. That's a phrase. Yeah. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That's a phrase. Uh -huh. But the last phrase of petition in the prayer that we have been given as the model prayer, the disciples prayer, the kingdom prayer, the last phrase of petition uh -huh. is deliver us right. from evil. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. For whatever else I will get Dr. Spearman in the prayer, I can't leave the prayer, okay, unless I've been delivered from the evil. I want to give him praise coming in, adoration, Brother D. I, I want to give that to him coming into prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Ain't nobody like you. I, I genuflect before you. I adore you. I, I celebrate you. I salute you. I announce nobody like you. I, I got all that coming into prayer. Moving into the prayer, I start taking on his purpose and taking on his agenda. Kingdom come and will be done in earth. Yes, right. Not just on earth. Come on. In earth. Yes. That's good. Okay. In earth. Not just on terra firma, but in tabernacle. 
Okay, I, I need that phrase coming into prayer. I, I need to get a hold to my bread because every day I need some fresh bread. Every day I wake up, I need a new mercy. Every day I wake up, I need him to handle another need. Every day I wake up, I'm looking for him because I'm totally dependent upon him. I get all of that in prayer. I get the forgiveness of my sin. Because there's some things I do I didn't even know I did, and it was sin. Okay, I'm going to find you. I, I need pardon, and I, I need daily pardon. There, there are days I don't even think I did nothing, but I ask him to forgive me anyway, just in case. I get all of that coming into prayer. Coming through prayer, I hear him saying, I won't lead you into temptation. And, and if you, you know anything about temptation, you can find it yourself. I don't need the Lord to lead me into temptation. I, I've always been able to find that on my own. But I pray that the Lord would guide me and keep me from my pressure points. Uh, some of y'all are looking real sanctimonious on a Thursday night, but let me tell you the truth about you. you got a pressure point. All right, that, that's all. That's all the temptation is. It is pressure on your flesh. And everybody up in here, uh, look past me if you need to, but everybody up in here got a pressure point. Uh, I, I, I know you feel sickness only because we ain't put no pressure point in front of you. You judge everybody about everything they're doing wrong and what they ain't doing right, but we just ain't caught you because we ain't touched your pressure point. Oh, he got to be chocolate. He got to be ebony hued, six feet, a uh, hunt, tall, dark, debonair, BMW, black man working. Oh, we just touched your pressure point. Okay, here she comes, uh, 5 11, looking like a glass of water, Coca Cola bottle. Okay, now we found your pressure point. It ain't on a Thursday. Your pressure point don't come till Friday night. Oh, we found your pressure point. I hope I see you. Oh, you want to touch me? Touch me! Come on! But it doesn't matter if I get all of that. And I leave prayer. Not delivered from the evil. Because there is something outside of me that's trying to wreck me. All right, I'm going to find you. There's something outside of me that wants to destroy me. There is something outside of me that wants to keep the purpose of God from flourishing in my life. And that's called evil. Pastor Morris, let me give my practical functional definition for evil. Evil is live spelled backwards. I'm sorry, that's all I got. You know what evil is? Anything that won't let you live the way God wants you to live. All right, get up off me. Let me preach. I said evil is anything that won't let you live the way God wants you to live. Anything that's trying to steal your peace, that's evil. Anything that wants your worried every day, that's evil. Anything that's always bringing you some trivialities and some pettiness, that's evil. Anything that's trying to squash your potential, that's evil. Anything that's speaking against your future, that's evil. Anything trying to undermine what God is doing in your life, that's evil. Anything trying to keep me from abundant life, that's evil. Anything that's trying to keep me from stepping into what God said I could have, that's evil. I need to be delivered from the evil. I need to be delivered from everything that's keeping me from living the way God wants me to live. Jesus already taught us that you can pray evil away. All right, you can help me preach now. Look at somebody and tell them you can pray it away. Jesus taught us in principle that you can pray evil away. Now, Dr. Landry, this is what they taught us in seminary. I don't know if it's right. I'm just telling you that's what they taught us. 
They told us that in the New Testament, we'll find the principles. And in the Old Covenant, we'll find the pictures. Okay, I work. In the New Testament, you'll find principles. In the Old Testament, you'll find pictures. So Jesus will hand you a principle in the New Covenant. And then you can look and find a picture of the principle in the Old Covenant. That's good. Okay, pass. I'm a preach. Okay. So I found a picture of the principle. Deliver us from evil. It's an episode encouched in the Chronicles of the King. Second Kings chapter 19. Uh, I found me a picture. And here's a picture of someone being delivered from evil by praying the evil away. You read the text with me? And this is what's going on. You got a fella by the name of Sennacherib. Sennacherib is a tyrant. Yes, he is. Sennacherib is one of the most evil, despotic figures in history. Wow. He, he's not just bad to the bone in the Bible. He's just bad to the bone. <laughs> you will find him in reliefs. You will find him in annals. You will find him layered in history. Historians left record to tell us about a fella by the name of Sennacherib. Uh -huh. This is Sargon's the second son. Uh -huh. And he was a devil. Now his son is a worse devil than he. Right, right. He has taken corruption to a whole nother level. And what he is doing now is quickly expanding the Assyrian monarchy. And so he has armies that are moving through across Asia Minor, now coming into Palestine. And he is wrecking everything all his way down toward Jerusalem. Every little city, every little village, he's taking it over. And he's not just taking it over. When he comes into the city, his cruelty and the reputation of his cruelty has preceded him and people would commit suicide knowing that Sennacherib was on his way. Wow. He was known for flailing men. Wow. Skinning them alive. He was known for beheading you in front of your family. Wow. He was known for cutting off that was a big thing for him. He liked to cut off hands. He would get you and rape your family and then cut off your hands and then they would march you back into his kingdom. He would take over cities and kill people. He was a despot. He was worse than anyone you know in modern history. Wow. And now he wants Jerusalem. He's taken over all the other little cities. But he wants Jerusalem. Oh, get ready to come and touch me. He wants Jerusalem. He wants Jerusalem. He wants the place called Peace. Let me find somebody. Because you've been trying to figure out what the warfare is really all about. The warfare is not over your marriage. The warfare is over your peace. The warfare is not over your money. The warfare is over your peace. He's not trying to occupy your job. He's trying to occupy your peace. He's not trying to take over your bank account. He's trying to take over your peace. He don't want your little church position. He wants your peace. He don't want your child. He wants your peace. Because if he can steal your peace, he's stealing everything that you already have. If you lose your peace, you lose your shalom. Come touch me. Shalom is nothing missing. 
Nothing lacking. Nothing broken. Yes. Nothing lacking. Yes. I need you to help me preach. Look at somebody and tell them nothing missing. Nothing, nothing broken. Nothing, broken. Nothing, lacking. nothing lacking. I can stand in the middle of a storm and I can deal with a storm yes, as long as I have my peace. Yeah. I can go to bed even if my child ain't home tonight because I still got my peace. I got a pink slip, but I still got my peace. I got a foreclosure, but I still got my peace. I got a bankruptcy, but I still got my peace. Got a repo, but I still. Sennacherib Hold your peace. He's not going after the city. He's going after the peace. And the evil that the enemy brings against us is designed to rob you of your peace. Romans 16 and 20. Romans chapter 16 and verse 20. The apostle Paul says this about your spiritual warfare. And the God of peace. Yes, sir. I need a Bible reading. And the God of peace yes, sir. will bring Satan up under your feet shortly. Yeah, yeah. Not the God of warfare. I, I would have looked for Jehovah Gabor uh -huh. to fight my battles, but Paul said it won't be Jehovah Gabor, it'll be Jehovah Shalom. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I would have thought it was Jehovah Nisi because that's the God of my battle. Right. He flies flags of my victory on my way in. But he doesn't say it will be Jehovah Nisi. He says it will be Jehovah Shalom. Right, right, right. I thought it would be uh, Jehovah Shabbat. Uh -huh. That's the Lord of the armies. Yes, That's the Lord of hosts. I, I thought it would be him. But no, it's, it's Jehovah Shalom. It's the God of my peace. Yes, the God of peace is the one who puts Satan up under your feet. Yes, I want to announce to you tonight how to know when you're winning. You know when you're winning, when you still got your peace. I'm going to try it one more time. You know when you're winning because you still got your peace. So I need you to go home tonight and laugh in the devil's face. You hit me the best that you could, but I still got my peace. You wreck everything on that job, but I still got my peace. Had a flat tire, couldn't find my gas tank. Oh, but I found And 
I said, uh, Lord, you got a letter. Now, if you ain't on me to hoop and holler, you might want to jump on your shout right now. Lord, you got a letter? Sennacherib sent Hezekiah a letter. Hezekiah got that letter, ran it down to the church, put it on the altar, and said, Lord, you got your letter. He said he's going to tear up your stuff. He said he's going to mess with your people. He said he's going to ransack your inheritance. You might want to handle this. This ain't mine. Lord, you got a letter. I need somebody to throw your hands up and say, Lord, Lord you got a letter. Got a Something's trying to intimidate me. Something's trying to hold me back. Something's trying to threaten the purposes of God in my life. I will not be intimidated because this is not my fight. It's not my letter. I'm turning it over to God. Yeah. I need you to get in your car tonight and say, Lord, you got a bill. Y'all didn't say it. Lord, you got an enemy. Lord, you got somebody talking about you. Lord, you got somebody messing with your children. This ain't for me, Lord. You got a letter. His problem was a person. Y'all making this longer than it's supposed to. He's got a problem, but his problem is personified. It's a person. Because you know you can get evil out of people. I know you can't talk about it because you're real deep and spiritual. But some of you tonight, if the truth be told, you about one person out of your life away from getting rid of a whole bunch of drama. And you can clap because some of them in the room with you right now. Intimidating you 
with pieces of paper. You run down to Kaiser. And your whole day is rent. That's Richmond. Rent. And your whole day is messed up for one reason. He handed you a piece of paper. You calling everybody all around town. The doctor he gave you a piece of paper. And on the piece of paper, he say you positive. And on the piece of paper, he say you're going to have to take a prescription. And you all worried and tore up over a piece of paper. You can't tell it, so I'm going to tell it for you. You got a piece of paper right now. You ain't open. right now on the table <laughs> the last thing you want to do is open up that piece of paper come on sis. you know how it is when you when you when you know you living in the favor can't you tell the difference between how you go to the post office box when you living in favor versus when you living in fear right right yeah. 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 oh when you think you living in favor you be skipping down to the mailbox you can't wait to open it up. But oh, when you think they sending you something to intimidate you, you sit it on the table, won't even open it up because you are intimidated by what's on that piece of paper. Wow. Jesus. Now if the enemy can send you a piece of paper that'll wreck your day. You ought to be able to get another piece of paper that'll make your day. And anytime I think that the enemy is sending me a document and trying to intimidate me and trying to bring some evil to my living, this is what I do. I just grab another document. He sent me a piece of paper, so I said, okay, devil, we're doing paper for paper. All right, watch this. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk through the paper for paper. Oh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I see? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We do it paper to paper. No weapon formed against me is able to prosper. We do it paper to paper. And God be. Oh, my God. 
all over this house. This is a very specific call for someone or some bodies. You have a literal piece of paper that's trying to intimidate you in this season. The Lord told me you would be here tonight that I was assigned to preach your deliverance. I got a piece of paper. I got a document. And it has taken over my mind. It's messing with my emotions. Meet me at the altar. You're here. The Lord told me you would be here.
there's healing in your body. Every x-ray. Come on, blood work. MRI. Cascades. Everything that returns. You're going to have a praise report. Father, in the name of Jesus. Overwrite the diagnosis. Overwrite the disease and the sickness. We command it in Jesus' name. Overwrite it. Turn it around for me. It's turning around for me.